Hey, welcome back to the four pillars of men's health. So glad that you've come here and checked out this kind of stuff. And I, it tells me something about you as a person that you are interested in getting your life squared around. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of that. And I hope the things I have to say for you is really helpful and that, and that it gives you ideas and things that you can work on in your own life to help you become a better person and live longer and do better and fulfill your mission that you have to feel, fulfill in your life. Today we're going to be talking about the whole idea of creating a new you. Wouldn't it be great if we could go back in our life and erase some of those things that we did that weren't so good and, and just become a different person and make good choices and just kind of rearrange things? Well, you know, I, I think that somewhat at least that's a little bit true. You can do that. And, um, and you know, not take away all the problems and everything that we have, but... But we can create a new, our new self. And here's some, I mean, this is just some stuff that you might be interested in. Just our own physical body. Let, listen to this. Here's a couple things. Here's a few things about our body that's just amazing. This skin that we have on our bodies, it, the outer layer of it, there's many layers of it, but the outer layer replaces itself every 35 days. So every... 35 days, you get new skin. <laughs> That's amazing to me. Your liver that cleanses your system out, it replaces itself every six weeks. That's incredible. The stomach lining that we, in our digestive tract, it replaces itself every four days. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The skeletal system, our bones and our bodies, um, they replace themselves every three months. And our brain, in our, in our head, it, the, all, the, all the things that go on in your brain, that, all that, the, the uh, material part of that replaces itself, guess what? Every two months. It's just incredible. Our whole body, down to the last atom, Rejuvenates, it rejuvenates itself or, or you every five to seven years you have a new body that's incredible and if God designed us that way our bodies that way that tells me that it's probably a good case to make for us changing the way we are over over the next let's say the next five years we could have a whole new not only just a physical body but a mental state a spiritual state a nutritional state a fitness state and all that could change and become new and it's, it's just incredible for me to think that so i'm gonna today i'm just gonna i believe that i, I saw it happen to myself i believe it can happen in you now at some points you know, if you've done some things that are totally drastic, like for example, drugs, or you damage your body, like in say, in, you're active in sports and you hurt yourself, there are there are things that you're not going to recover from, but you can do things that help you be better. And uh, I'm just going to go through. I have I have ten points that I'd like to cover with you about ways that you can create a new you. So again, if, if you have a pencil handy, I, I would just encourage you to write these things down. Another, another way to do this is it's, it's in a chapter in my book. It's a chapter called Creating a New You, and you can get that book on Amazon or, or text, email me or text me or contact me. I'll send you an autographed version of that book. I'd be happy to do that. I think it's $16.95 or something like that. But uh, I'd be happy to do that. And, um, and it goes into a pretty deep dive into uh, this particular facet of life, creating a, you, a new you. So here, let's just jump into it. Number one is, in order to create a new you, 
you really have to have a laser focused belief that it can happen. You can't be, you can't say, uh, you know, one side of your mouth say, you know what, I, I want to have a new you or a new me, but on the other side of your mouth or in your thoughts be thinking that could never happen. That, that'll never be the way it's going to be. L listen to me. Listen to me. If I can do it, Dave Scadam, a uh, farmer, construction worker from Montana, if I can do it, you can do it too. And uh, I just know, I just know that it can happen. So the first thing is, the thing that is really destructive for us is we've got to remove the doubt, the self-doubt. So you got to replace those negative thoughts and that cyclical downhill thing that happens with us, uh, catastrophe thinking that, that says, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm never going to get well, I'm never going to be able to do this, or I'm never going to be able to get out of this horrible place I'm at. That's not true. You can and you will. So the first thing is, you know, laser focused belief. Get rid of the doubt. Replace the doubt with belief and faith and trust. And for me, it was a trust in God and his, his desire for me to be healthy, his love for me, and those kinds of things. That's for me, that was the nugget, the root of all of this. And uh, also... You know, just me believing, my family believing, and uh, so you can do it. But the first thing you got to do is get a laser focused belief system. Next thing is, you you have. We just went through in our last session the baby steps, and if you haven't listened to that yet, you got you need to go back and listen to that. You got that's a that's critical to this whole process is t learning to take baby steps. But the the the. The key here is keep your beliefs manageable and under control. If you try and tr try and do all the stuff that you need to do to get yourself healthy and well in just a matter of a short period of time, it's not going to work. You're going to get discouraged. Plus, plus, you know this whole thing about getting healthy. It's a journey. It's a, it's a life journey and it's a process of growth. And, and you don't want to take shortcuts. You don't want to cut this thing short. You want to enjoy every stage of this journey. And like we talked about in the Baby Steps chapter or podcast, it's about enjoying the little mini victories. And, um, and it's just, and, and the other thing about if trying to do too much at once uh, we're, we're struggling with this in our construction business. We're having extreme growth right now. And um, we're almost like doubling our income every year for the past two or three years. And I'm telling you, it is really hard. It's a challenge to keep that healthy because things are changing. I have to change. My business partner has to change. Our system of how we do things has to change. And if you take that too quick... You can, you can bankrupt a business very easily by growing too fast. And it's the same way with this whole process of, of becoming, have, getting a new you. If you take it too quick, it's going to be too much and you'll fail and it won't be lasting. And so uh, make sure your goals are manageable. Make sure they're measurable and under control. The, net, the third thing is... Um, create a vision and a strategy. You know, when I, in high school, I had this great wrestling coach. His name was Mr. Springer. And um, Coach Springer, he's a good guy. And he, uh, he, he uh, one of the things that he did for us is he would, before, you know, like the day before we had a wrestling match, he would, he would have us take some time and just sit on the mats and not do anything but think about us being up on a podium in first place. <laughs> and so, so we would do that. We would sit. We would sit on the mat. Instead of practicing wrestling and moves and everything and conditioning, we would sit on the mat and just envision ourselves, envision ourselves being up on that podium. Now, I, I gotta be honest with you, it didn't really help me that much. <laughs> 
but I won a few and lost a few. But uh, I wasn't that great a wrestler. But but it's uh, but if you can get that mindset in your head in this way, and that, this is what I did with with creating myself as a new healthy person. I had to envision myself riding that bike, running those miles, swimming in the pool. I you know I. When I started uh, Iron Man, I didn't know how to swim. And I, I have a crazy story about jumping in that pool and just like being so, it was so embarrassing that I, I was here, I was 45, 50 year old, 50 year old guy and I <laughs> didn't know how to swim. And um, it was, it, it, so it's important that you create a vision of yourself so that you know how to go, you know where to go. If you don't have a way a, a, a direction in mind, then you, you don't know where to go. So you got to have, start with that vision, start with the end goal, and then back up from that. You know, what the day before I accomplished that goal, what was I doing? The week before I accomplished that goal, what was I doing? The month before I was accomplished that goal, what was I doing? The year before I accomplished that goal, what was I doing? And then you'll, you'll have like a straight path right to that goal. And that's the way to do it. So create a vision and a strategy for getting to that place. All right, so that's number three. So we talked about a laser focus and good belief. Uh, keep your beliefs manageable and under control. Create a vision and a strategy. The fourth one is choose the steps that you're going to take. So if you if you have a vision of yourself over here, and let's let's just let's just say that you want to just to because it's really concrete lose weight, and a lot of us want to lose weight. Let's say you want to lose ten pounds in one year, or ten pounds in ten weeks. That's a pretty good time frame. So let's just say that you want to do that. You know what you should do? You should look up what your body mass, BMI, body mass index is going to be like with 10 pounds off your body. And you can Google that and say, what's a, what's a person look like with a BMI of this number? And, and you can get like an actual visual of how much it's going to change your body compared to what it is right now. So you can get like a really good visual of that. Try, try that out. But the important is to Get that vision, and then what do I need to do to get to, to lose those pounds? How do I do that? How many calories do I need to be eating every day? How much exercise, how many calories do I need to burn every day? And what kinds of food should I be eating every day? There's a, there's a I mean, if you're, if you're eating uh, McDonald's, you're pretty limited on how much you can how much you can eat every day. But if you're eating green salads, you can you can put like a five gallon bucket down a day, man. That stuff is low calories. I'm not I'm not saying to do that, but I'm just saying in food there's a whole spectrum of calories, and you need to choose nutritious ways of losing weight that keep you healthy because our our end goal really is to maintain and have a good healthy lifestyle not necessarily to lose weight but usually weight is a consideration so so choose the steps you're going to take to get to that goal all right the fifth one make be specific with your goals and make them measurable you may make them measurable you can't say um you know i'm gonna go uh, exercise tomorrow no, that doesn't work you You've got to have specific goals in mind. You should say, instead of, I'm going to exercise tomorrow, you should say, I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm going to run for 30 minutes, and I'm going to run 3 miles. And I'll be done with that by 7 o'clock, or whatever your time frame is. So you see the difference between that? One is, hey, I'm going to exercise tomorrow. Well, guess what happens tomorrow? First thing that happens, you wake up in the morning, you have a headache or you're not feeling well. And you're, uh, and you say, well, I can just, I'll, I'll do this at noon. I'll, I'll just get a little more sleep. I'll do it at noon. And noon comes, and, you know, I, uh, I want to go eat lunch with my buddy. Uh, so I'll do it tonight. And then tonight, guess what happens? I'm wiped out. I, I'll just do this tomorrow. <laughs> 
So the difference is you with my process there is you sp you picked a time, you've picked what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Very specific and very measurable. So when you wake up in the morning, you're not feeling well. It's six o'clock. You already committed to yourself. Maybe you have your clothes laying out already. And you shut your alarm off and you have to stumble over your clothes. <laughs> and uh, instead of getting back in bed, you just put your clothes on and take off. So that's what you got to do is be specific and have measurable goals. Isn't this great? This, these are incredible ways for you to become and have a new you. The sixth one is just make a commitment to start. You know, you have got to say... You can't just keep saying to yourself, well, I'm going to improve the way I think and process life and, um, and just leave it at that. You, you've got to find a way to make that happen. You, and here's what I did. I thought to myself, who, you know, it, as, you, as you scan the horizon of people who think well and process life well, uh, a lot of these motivation, self-motivation people are doing a good job in that area. And you know who the king or the, yeah, the king of self-motivation and self-improvement is? Is Napoleon Hill. He wrote this incredible book called Think and Grow Rich. And, and when, you, when, you, when you hear that term, you think of money, but I'm telling you, there's a lot more to being rich than having money. In fact, Napoleon himself puts riches and financial gain at the bottom of a list of, of ways to be rich. And, um, and, and so what I did was I thought, man, you know, I should, I should uh, get one of Napoleon Hill's books. So I got it, I read it, it changed my life. And then, and then I thought to myself, you know what, if I really want to change the way I'm thinking, I need to be rubbing shoulders with these people as well that are going through this same thing that I'm going through. So you know what I did? I signed up for the Napoleon Hill instructor certification course. And I went through a, a whole process of learning inside and out the Napoleon Hill principles of success. And that has been a dramatic thing for me in the way I process life and the way I think. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. You can get certified as an instructor at that organization. And along that trail and that path, you meet amazing, amazing people who you can rub shoulders with and who challenge you and, um, and help you grow to be a more healthy person. So, so that's what you got to do is, is make a commitment to s just get started. And so that's how I did it with my uh, accurate thinking. I got involved with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and a bunch of other stuff. I did a bunch of other stuff, but that was one of the one of the big things. And and um, and don't be afraid. You know, if you if you want to get started with something, um, invest some money into it. So you got skin in the game. And if you drop the ball, you're gonna lose. If I would have if I would not follow through with the Napoleon Hill thing, I think it was the whole thing, the whole process, probably like. Well, you got to travel and everything. It's probably two grand, two thousand dollars. If I would have, if I wouldn't have invested in that, that wouldn't have given me the incentive to keep on going in that course. And um, so, so buy a treadmill. You know, go out and buy a treadmill and get healthy with a treadmill, or or buy the Napoleon Hill course, or buy yourself a year subscription with a nutritionist who's going to help you along the way to getting healthy with your nutrition. Um, you know, do those kinds of things. Get yourself a spiritual mentor, those kinds of things. Invest some money into it so you have skin in the game. And uh, it'll make a big difference. So we've learned, about, we've learned about keeping and having a laser focus and getting strong belief. Keep your beliefs manageable and under control. Choose the steps that you will take to get to that place. Be specific and make them measurable with your goals. And make a commitment just to get started. Just do it, man. You might, you might find out that you made the wrong choice. But the worst thing is you have to do something different. So just get started. Um, here's, here's something. I, this is number seven, and it's so critical. It's, it's such a powerful thing to, um, to really get this 
idea ingrained in your system, and that is be thankful. Always, always, always have time to be thankful in your life. Be thankful to God. Be thankful to yourself. Be thankful about the people around you who are helping you. And show that appreciation. Just let that ooze out of you. I, I think that is so critical that we learn to be a thankful person and take time with that. Just be I mean, go out and just lay out in a grassy field or under some stars or in, at bed when you're going to sleep at night and just spend time being thankful for everything that you have. And it's, it's going to be dramatic for you. I should write a whole book on that. It's just, it, it's just, it is so powerful. And, um, the, you know, in the Christian realm, it's count your blessings be thankful, and um, it's powerful. It's so powerful. So that's that's really important. Here's here's another uh, little bit of this number eight, a little bit on the cringe side, but you got to hold yourself accountable. And it's notice when you don't follow through. And I'm just being gentle there with my verbiage, but <clears throat> bust yourself when you're not when you don't do what you know you're supposed to be doing. Bust yourself for that. You know, don't let yourself get away with that. Be gentle with yourself, but bust yourself. Now, one of the things that I do, because one of my biggest struggles is um, in being healthy, is eating the right types of food and eating the right amount. I have I have uh, issues there, and and I'm working through that. But one of the things I do to counter that is I have a, a program on my phone called my the My Fitness Pal, and so every day I or the night before even usually the night before. I sit down and I plan out every bite of food that I'm going to eat the next day. And, and I kind of know what I'm going to be doing that day. So I know, you know, where I can get my food and what I have to pack with me and that kind of thing. But I write in there, it has my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner and snacks. And, and I start off the, I start off the day having that right in my phone. And as I go through the day, I look and if I, if I have a little bit of a lenient day with my calories, sometimes I can splurge a little bit and get something that I really enjoy. And I try and leave some room for that. But, um, but, but at the end of the day, I look at that thing and I, if I grab a bag of chips with 800 calories in them, I got to put that thing in there, 800 calories of chips. And, and it's hard. It's a bummer. And, um, and so, but it's a good way to hold yourself accountable and I'd encourage you to do that. But it's important to find a way to, when you set a goal, to notice when you don't accomplish that goal. Uh, number nine, use affirmations. I am, I'm so big in this. I, I, every, I like, I don't know how many, I write them out. I have a list of them, write in my journal. Uh, so at least two or three times a day, I'm going through affirmations. And I've, I've seen some miraculous things happen with, with affirmations. And there's another book I should be writing is a, a book on the importance of affirmations and, and how valuable that is in your life. The last thing I just want to say is keep a journal. Um, you know, uh, when you go to the gym, your, your coach or your uh, uh, fitness trainer, what they do is they, they write out a chart and you got to do this many squats this many times for this many reps and then you got to do uh, deadlifts this many times and so it's this whole chart of workouts and the reason for that is number one it gives you direction but the other thing is is it shows you what you've done how much you've accomplished and you should take that same principle and apply it to all areas of your life I have a, I journal all the time I journal almost every day I write down What's going on? What happened? How I'm feeling? What I'm doing? Exciting things, ne negative things, and um, write out my, you know, my vision in my journal. I have my vision for my life, and all those my affirmations all in there. And journaling is so critically important. So I just want to I just want to say wrap this up by saying it is possible for you to create a new you. If I can do it you can do it. And the transformation is drastic.
And you can do it. I know you can. I just want to, you know, stick with me on this. I get our next uh, session, our next podcast, our next uh, video is going to be about building a team. And this this is really exciting to me because I I had a lot of people helping me during this whole process of getting well and healthy, and I want to share a little bit about who I brought into my sphere for um, the team that I needed to get healthy. And remember, we're, we're not Lone Rangers. We can't do this ourselves. We need to build a team. So the next one's gonna be about that. So don't, don't forget, you know, start this process of, of uh, creating a you, new you by doing these 10 things. Have a laser focus. Keep your least, beliefs manageable and uh, under control. Create a vision and a strategy. Choose the steps that you will take. Make your goals specific and measurable. Make a commitment to just get started. Just go do it. Um, uh, be thankful. Notice when you don't follow through. Hold yourself accountable. Use affirmations and create a journal. And with all these things, you can create a new you.